Well, now it's time for the main event, isn't it? We've been waiting a long time. As a matter of fact, the bell for the main event to start rang at six minutes till 10 o'clock. They said, we've got a significant overrun for you tonight. We've already gone through it. Why can't they just schedule the shit? I mean, even... Even cousin Brian Alvarez is getting frustrated because he's got the apparatus that you can't easily set, and he's going out of his mind trying to keep up with these things. Well, the other thing is, except for the rare week, like last week, I think, with Moxley versus Darby, it loses viewers. So if you're doing something that doesn't benefit the programs, the matches, the feuds, the viewership goes away, you put main event stuff at the end of the show, no one sees it. There's no reason for it, yet they doubled, triple down on it 30 minutes this week. Well, and at, at least, and we'll get to that in a second, but it was the world title versus the, oh, God, the intercontinental title. No, the international no. title is Osprey. Continental. Con okay, it, it, WWE has the intercontinental title, AEW has the international title and the continental title. So... Uh, uh, Am I wrong? Did they not just announce this on Twitter like about four or five days before the show? I saw this on Twitter because MJF retweeted it, and then I got retweeted, you know, people copied it and quoted it to us, where he couldn't understand the stipulation. That was the first time I heard of the match or the stipulation. Well, it, it, it was a double title match. The world title was on the line versus the continental title, but the continental title was only on the line for the first 20 minutes of the match. Now, again, we know that Tony has liked to watch old wrestling tapes, and, you know, there, there's some of the other guys that go back and they, they watch, but they don't get the old wrestling. The deal they were doing here originated, I believe, in the Carolinas territory, it's I, I think, although you may be able to correct me because other territories may have done this, but the deal was in the Mid-Atlantic territory, the television title had a time limit of 20 minutes on championship matches. If you were the TV champion and you defended the title on TV, it was a 20-minute time limit because it's an hour fucking program in total, and so that was more befitting a television match, right? So then if the, let's say Ricky Steamboat is the Mid-Atlantic TV champion and he's in a program against his ex-tag team partner, number one Paul Jones, who's the U.S. champion, then if they had a match in the arenas, the TV, or even if the other guy wasn't a champion and just the TV champion had a match, a special arena match, house show match where there was some issue, the TV title would be on the line for the first 20 minutes only in a match with an hour time limit or whatever the case because that was the time limit of all TV title matches. So it made sense. And that way they could work the deal where the TV champion got beat in the house show match, but it took 23 minutes, so he would still be the TV champion, and if it had been on television, he wouldn't have been beaten, etc. Simple but effective. But there's no reason for the uh, Continental title to be on the line for the first 20 minutes only, because they have not established that the time limit for every Continental title match is 20 minutes. So he just did a stipulation that he's heard of in the past without bothering to figure out why the fuck that it was done that way to begin with. Did I lose anybody or did I explain that properly? I think you had explained it as good as you can. So, I mean, there was no... That's where it was done and why it was done and why it made sense to do it there. But it didn't make sense to do it here. He just wanted to have these guys wrestle and be able to have a winner without switching a belt. <sighs> so, and we already know that it's going over 20 minutes due to the stipulation. They start at six minutes till. And 
again, Danielson is a very talented guy, and he gets more than most people out of other people. But this fucking Japanese certified public accountant, he is rotten. He is broken down. What? The, no, this went forever. At the top of 10, 10 o'clock, they were in break. So anybody was switching over would see picture in picture at best. And then on my local cable, it went to full commercial. And then they went on and on. And by 10, 15 p.m., the Continental title was off the line. And at that point, O'Cody gave Danielson a tombstone pile driver on a chair on the floor. No, he didn't. For... What? If you watched it, his head didn't come anywhere near the chair. And the camera was right on it, so you couldn't miss it. Okay, but the point being... It wasn't for lack of trying. All of his shit looks bad. But it was a tombstone pile driver on a chair on the floor for a break spot. To where by the time the the three-minute break was over with, the guy that had to reti retire because of concussions and needs neck surgery that just got tombstone pile driven on a chair on the floor was back beating the shit out of the other guy. And that was 26 minutes into this fucking thing. So, I mean, did you see, I couldn't watch all of it. I was trying to see because they were laying around for so long. But was there anything, again, I've tried to watch that the, the multi-million dollar acquisition of Kazuchuji Chuji Okada, it, it, he moves like a ruptured moose. Anything. Well, did you see anything? I hated this match. I hated this match. And quite frankly, it's not just Okada. Brian Danielson has had some really great matches. But he also wrestles a really boring, slow-paced, for no logical reason style. And even when you want to say he's too hurt to throw the kick, so he has to take five seconds to do it. Everything took forever. And then they were on the floor for forever. And the referee did nothing. He would check on them. <laughs> and, Yo, the okay? and, the and the crowd was dead. And the crowd was dead. Need me to bring you anything? And the crowd was dead. I hated this match. I thought it was terrible. Okada has not looked good in AEW. This was the worst of Danielson in my eyes. Just a slow match with the things that you see in every other match. But it took forever to me. It was a long match that did not serve anyone's best interest being a long match. Well, and then, as I mentioned, after the tombstone pile drivers and the other type of things, Danielson won with a backslide. <laughs> and then here comes the plumber and his group of pipe fitters. And I, I don't know. Moxley said a bunch of shit to him that not just me, but nobody understands what he's talking about. It's supposed. I assume there's going to be some grand reveal of what the fuck his deal is or what's going on here. But he keeps saying, it's not about me. I wish it wasn't about you. Apparently, this is all about you. But it's not about me. I didn't want this. And I, I, whatever the fuck, but they're holding him, holding Danielson down while Moxley is verbally doing whatever, chastising him. And they're going to fuck him up as the, the threat. And then here comes our boy Wheeler. Wheeler useless hits the ring with a hammer in his hand and all four of them bailed. And I mean, this is, again, well, hold on, all four of them bailed. And yes, it's a guy with a hammer, but he's also, he's the size of a 12-year-old with a hammer. But then, Moxley just gets back in the ring and is standing there looking at him. And there's Wheeler with the hammer, he's holding it, and he's exhibiting the excitement of a cabbage as he uh, is conflicted and Moxley just standing there, not even really daring him, just staring at him. And he won't do anything. And he's holding the hammer and he's looking at the hammer like, should I hit this guy with the hammer? 
And then finally, he didn't sell for a hammer. No, he's just Moxley. He's just standing there, but the other guy is not making any motion like he's going to hit him. Why did he bring the fucking hammer in there if he wasn't prepared to hit some of these motherfuckers with a hammer? He chased the four of them out of the ring with the hammer, and they just watched as Moxley walked right back into the yes. ring. <laughs> and then wh why are we supposed to support this baby face that will let the heel just stand there while he, while a baby face has a hammer in his hand and, and is, is kowtowed into immobility and won't do anything because the baby or the heel is so fearsome standing there. And then finally Danielson had to tackle Moxley. And then Claudio glommed Wheeler and he dropped the hammer. So now they've neutralized Wheeler. They're back on fucking Danielson. But then the plumber gets out and Marina Schaefer, because she's his bodyguard, rolls out with him. And so it's a four-way with Danielson and Wheeler against Pac and Claudio. And then the heels bail out. And then I thought, thank God that's over. And then Wheeler gets the microphone. And he says in that whiny, pleading, plaintive voice, I'm sick and tired of you two treating me like a child. And then my DVR froze because I recorded the program after AEW Dynamite and these son of a bitches ran over the fucking overrun. But basically, he's tired of them treating him like a child, even though he's the size of one. And Brian, did you hear anything after? Did you tape two programs after Dynamite no. so you could see everything? I don't know why, but I, I got the hour after Dynamite recorded on my DVR. And him and Danielson are going to team up and challenge the not Blackpool. I don't know what they are. Do they, they don't have a name. They do their promos and riddles. It was pointed out here, and it's true. You know, this is never about me. Okay, what's it about? <laughs> just, just tell me now. You got me down. Your friends are holding me. Why wait? Why delay this any longer? Well, just say it, man. Just say it. To my earlier question, because enough people keep talking about it, we're going to keep asking about it. If this is an angle to bring Shane McMahon to AEW, is this the way you would do it? Good, good, good. What? No, how did they're 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 really going through massive leaps and bounds of twisted logic to try to get this? What the fuck would Shane McMahon? Why would he deal with this group of? half over misfits and this fucking bald headed dimwit that runs the thing. If he was going to come in and try to take over AEW, because that would be the only reason to come in and do anything is try to take over AEW. Wouldn't you be up at the upper echelon? And the first thing that would happen is Don Fallis's guys would be signed away and some off-screen entity was assembling people that hadn't been together before into some group for some nefarious purpose, but they'd all be main event guys. And they might even be asking, why, why is it, am I being asked, I'm being sent money and asked to fucking talk to you about teaming up to one of their enemies? Why the fuck is this? Or some shit, but not just this idiot coming in and speaking in riddles about bad independent movies from foreign countries. Here's the problem. There's now people expecting Shane McMahon. So let's say it's not Shane McMahon. Who's this mystical leader that John Moxley's talking about? Well, it's not that... I, is he even talking about a mystical leader? When he says, it's not about me, I wanted something bigger. Is he talking about people let him down, but let the concept down, let the thing that they had planned down and now he has to get even danielson wasn't on board why are they mad at danielson didn't shane mcmahon say hey brian you're in the group i'd like you to come aboard too is that what sense does any of this make what about dabo kato 
He Ed, he would show up ahead of the the Shane as the advance guard. See, there's the biggest argument for Shane being involved with this. Wasn't Shane the mastermind of Raw Underground? Yes. Come on, it's the same thing. It's Moxley is the walking embodiment of Raw Underground. Well, if if anybody will put Moxley underground, I will support it. Maybe it'll be Dabo Kato. See, that's all I th when I think of Raw Underground, I just think of the look of it. I don't remember anyone doing anything other than Shane kind of jumping around, yelling, Dabo Kato, Dabo Yes, Kato. yes, and boom, and boy, the booyah. Hey, when, remember the booyah thing? When fucking, when they were trying to make Shane an announcer, remember this was what, late 98, early 99, I was still in Connecticut. And they made him the announcer, I think, of Sunday Night Heat, and they had me not only do commentary with him several times on air, but I was going down on, like, Sundays off or Saturdays off or when we didn't have to travel or whatever. I'd have to drive an hour to the studio and do two or three hours of practice commentary with Shane that nobody would ever hear because Jim Ross had too much stroke to be made to do it. and. I can't remember. Honestly, they wanted a color guy with him rather than, and Michael Cole, Kevin Dunn, had him too much favoritism, so he didn't have to do it, and Kevin Kelly was a play-by-play -play guy, so I ended up with doing color with Shane for practice, and it was brutal because he'd never announced before, and he thought he was a personality or should be, and I love Shane, and I've talked nice about Shane, but he was a rotten fucking announcer. And he was always going, and booyah, booyah. I said, what is booyah? That's a shotgun blast. Booyah? Oh, it was, it was brutal. Brutal booyah. A little dab will do me. Well, if he comes to AEW, they'll certainly boo him. But uh, we shall see. That was AEW Dynamite. Yes, it certainly was. From Pittsburgh. It certainly was the pits.